There are the wheeling lights. When those red lights go on, we get to go oh, and Long's moving, moving a little creeping. bit. The lights are out. We are now underway, but Long may be in a bit of problems. You can see skiing in that yellow Corvette. Took a look. Look oh, at this close. Squeeze wedges his way down the inside. Bumps Brandon Davis out of the way. The Viper one hit last year, showing its muscle once again. Wow, Daskalos using the grunt of that V10 to great effect. Davis tucks in his second. And look at Dino Crescentini around the outside of Pole Center Long in that Centric Park Stop Tech Porsche. Long back to forth, then Sopronis, then Skeen, and then the rest of that. GT Field of Thunder as they work through that intricate fountain complex. Well, we talked about Dino Crescentini being in a street fighter. He's immediately up into third spot. A great start for him and a good clean start. We expected problems here, but look at this. Brandon Davis looking at the inside of Daskalos. Doesn't make it stick. Boy, and you saw Crescentini even thinking, if they get into it, maybe I can do something. But there's that torque and power. Look at how quick that V10 and that V8 just leapt away a little bit from Crescentini. The strength of that Porsche is through the twisty bits and under braking, isn't it? It is, and Pat Long now dropped back to fourth. It hasn't been a great weekend for him. He's had so much success here on the streets at Long Beach, but was leading here right in this corner yesterday when he hit the wall in the ALMS race. He's looked for better things here today. He did uh, that a remarkable record, and that is Rob Holland running a little wide in turn eight, just nudging the tires was able to back out of it, but he's going to lose an awful lot of track time. Cal, let's even see what happens. Oh, teammates there. I don't think there was any contact, but Holland came in there with tremendous speed. No way he was going to make that corner. Look at this. Oshenbach, that's our championship leader. Damage to the right front corner, Greg. And that is serious. You can see that right front wheel is serious, and apparently it happened on the start, Cal. Let's go back to a replay of the start. On board here with Aaron Pavolino. He tries to go through the gap here. It isn't there. Look Ooh. at that. He turns Zitzka into Arshin back and hammers the wall hard. You can see also Zitza involved in that. So the top two qualified cars and touring car contact right away. And now Aschenbach just trying to limp his way into the pits. Tell you what, this Compass 360 crew has some serious work. Another look here, you're on board Aschenbach. There you can see him busy on the wheel. Nothing he can do. He didn't expect that. They're just looking straight ahead. We're on board now with Devin Cates in the VW GTI. He sees everything right in front of him, tries to scramble through here. Did he clear the carnage? I think he did. And meanwhile, Aschenbach sits frustrated in pit lane. Meanwhile, back to racing, you can see some of the debris sitting on the edge of the track. Drivers need to be a little careful of that. As good as these new Pirelli slick tires are, they can get cut down. And Christine. speaking of cut down, what a move by Dino. Oh, man, oh, man. We knew he was good on the brakes, but whether Brandon had just been a little conservative in these early laps, but Dino just sliced it to the inside. Dominant move there. And Brandon Davis said, all right, I'll return the favor. <laughs> he got the power down really well. I tell you what, that Mustang looks to be hooked up. It's not sliding around, but look up front. Jason Daskalos doing a tremendous job sliding that Viper around the streets here at Long Beach. And you've got Long is now up into third, but again, the possibility awaits for him to have to duck into the pit lane. Meanwhile, and that's an interesting thing, those two leaders working traffic, you get forced offline right toward that debris. You do, there's debris out there, there's marbles, a lot of races been run here throughout the course of this weekend, and Pat Long now on a mission. He's got the notice that he's got to make that pit stop. He'll have about three laps to make that, otherwise they'll probably stop scoring him, but he's in a brand new race car this weekend. It's a 2011 Porsche, did a quick shakedown at Button Willow last week. The car feels good and he put it on the pole. When is Pat Long going to serve that penalty? Because he is going to get stopped scoring here. Now he dives in, Greg. Right now. So that's the key. Now the question is, I'm not sure if it's going to be a stop and go or a drive through. So we'll have to watch that. And this is an eternity. It really is. It just seems like you're absolutely walking down this straightaway. You're seeing all the cars flashing by to your outside. Here's the start here. You see him there. He creeps before the lights are out. Comes to a standstill once again, but he probably moved outside of his box. Now on board here with Pat Long. Stop and go at the end of pit lane. Now he's got some work to do. He really needs a caution to try and minimize the damage here this afternoon. Oh, and Eric Foss problems smoke off tire. of that left front. Uh, left, left tire run, is isn't gone, it? Yeah. I think. But meanwhile, at the front of this pack, it looks like Daskalos may have a slight edge down this front straightaway. Doesn't pull away much. And Brandis Davis just keeps the heat on as Skeen is closing in as well in third. 
drop back to the GTS division, and Paul Brown continues to run strongly. Jason Von Kluge in that orange varsity Ford of Ann Arbor Mustang sits second. And so at this point, Navarro, R4 as they call him, leads in the touring car division. Round three of the Pirelli World Challenge Championship, and much of it is the pursuit of that black ACS Express Sun Micro Mustang in the hands of Brandon Davis chasing that white and black Delson Developments Viper of one Jason Daskalos and they are coming up into traffic. Daskalos swings wide, Davis able to get through but more traffic ahead. It's relentless here, Cal. Look at the difference in speed down shoreline drive. It must be about 50 miles an hour between these front running GT cars and the little touring cars coming up that straightaway. Unbelievable difference. Oh, and Daskalos is trapped behind Adams but now he gets by. Davis slices through. So, obviously Davis able to close up a little bit just through that bit in the fountain complex. And now look at Davis, cuts to the inside, starting to change his lines up. He's taking a run, he's cut, boy, did he get the power down up and around the outside. This is tough to do here. Down into turn eight, Calvin, he's alongside. Can he stay there? Well, that's the key. He should have the inside line, but Daskalos took the way the line a little bit. Davis forces to the inside. This is gonna be really tight through here. Good, clean, nice. racing, they touch. He get a little bump and go, but it was on the exit. No harm, no foul. They're both now at straight line drag race. But the thing is, is Davis has the inside. Ew, they just nudge a little bit again. But I think Daskalos realized he's got the line. If I try and get too aggressive, it could take us both out. And I'd rather live to fight a little bit longer. Davis, your leader, won here in 08, won the championship in 09 but hasn't raced here, Cal, since last year at this event, doesn't show. That was just fantastic racing by those drivers there. They kept it clean, they kept it hard, but meanwhile, Mike Skeen has been able to close in whilst those two guys went side by side for several corners. And they are coming up on Peter Cunningham, who currently is running just outside of a podium spot in that real-time HPD Acura, and these two leaders are going to, whoa, very close. PD doing what you're supposed to do. Try to get out of the way, but Brandon had already committed to the outside. Well, PD clearly in the wars today, and he has been all season. Boy, and Daskalos, that car is still bucking and weaving. He is on the edge and just nicks the wall. That is how intense the competition is with three classes of Pirelli World Challenge Championship. Here are the leaderboards. Davis, Daskalos, Skeen, and GT, GTS, Brown, Von Kluge, and Croslin and in touring cars, Navarro, Cates, and Shea Holbrook. But uh, what an interesting battle here, and here comes Sofronis once again down to the inside. Wow. Cal, he came from San Bernardino to make that pass. <laughs> Skeen really close to the wall there. Nearly squeezed him all the way up, but gave him a little bit of racing room, but the Porsche is really, really tough on the brakes. Lightweight car, relatively speaking, and really makes advantages there in the braking zones. But meanwhile, up front, Navarro continues to lead. Boy, does he look strong coming from the back again, obviously, with Aschenbach and uh, Zitza having their problems early. Navarro was the third quickest qualifier and has worked his way back through the front and doing a superb job on that entry. And there you see, is that Nick Hussain or is that PD? That's PD Cunningham. PD Cunningham, Cunningham that... right behind him, and uh, Navarro will be looking for him and uh, just trying to make... Oh! Ooh! You have to wonder if Navarro was looking in his rearview mirror, saw PD right behind him. Just got distracted for a moment. It's so easy to have happen on these street courses, Greg. You have to hit your marks. There's not a lot of grip offline. He just gets wide, does a good job, but he had a healthy lead there in class. You have to see if he hangs on to it. I believe he does. Keeps the lead. Yep, I don't think he lost that position, Cal. Meanwhile, out front, Brandon Davis has now gapped Daskalos a little bit. He's got some lap traffic between he and the second place runner right now, doing a superb job. Just keeping it really nice and clean. He isn't overworking those tires that may pay dividends towards the end of this race. Crescentini takes a look. Oh, I don't know if they took. Well, they did there. That settled that. A little bump. Crescentini is through. Skeen. Here comes Skeen. Jumping on that opportunity. He's trying to take advantage of that situation. <laughs> Three, Three wide down into the brake zone. Crescentini on the brakes latest once again. He takes the position. You get the feeling Skeen went, eh, no. <laughs> I think I'm going to wait on this one. Wow, absolutely some great judgment by Skeen, but some incredible driving by all three. That really was. I think Dino left Daskalos enough room on the outside of turn eight, but Jason didn't track all the way out, and consequently they touched and rubbed fenders heading down the back straightaway. Now coming up on Meyer's wounded Mazda at this point, so apparently that uh, problem. And look at now Daskalos, <laughs> Crescentini right down the middle of the track, oh. and here's a little nick once again. And he's wide, he's wide. Way out wide. He's out there in the marbles. We talk about the grip on these street circuits. You've got to be online. He took it in there so deep, just couldn't get it quite turned in. 
but did a nice job of recovering and not going straight on. Lost minimal amount of time, but he did lose a position to Skeen. What a great mature run by Brandon Davis here. He's really come on leaps and bounds. I mean, we've seen him come through his early years in this category and was pretty raw, but still got the results and had a lot of speed. But today, he has just driven the perfect race. It isn't over yet. Certainly, James Sofronis is very close. And now traffic is playing a part there. Jakubowski, I believe, that's the Cayman in the way. Brandon Davis slices through, but it also slows down James Sofronis a little bit. So probably no advantage there for James in that action. And look at this, Shea Holbrook now up into second in the touring car class. The Lucas Oil K&N MyPlugs entry, she did that while we were in break. Meanwhile, Rafael Navarro has continued to put on, even with that li one little run down into the runoff area, he was able to regain, never lost the lead, and he's got about three corners clear right now of Shea Holbrook. So Rafael doing a great job in that Revo Technique Carbotech entry. Oh, this is a surprise skein, side of the road. I don't see any damage, and you see the worker uh, leaning through the fence talking to him, so you'd have to guess some sort of mechanical failure. And he had dropped back a little bit, although yeah. he looked a little racy there the last time we were watching him. So we'll have to, you know, at this point, it would be pure speculation. But Brandon Davis, look at this, late in the going here, he's stretched that margin once again, and it got down to under a second, and now it's just a little bit over two seconds at this point. Davis, I think this is the most mature drive I've seen him put together. He has done everything very, very well. Davis rolls onto the throttle again. Beautiful, no wheel spin, gapping it, and should see the white flag flying as he comes by start finish. Sofronis now clears the traffic. White flag, we're on the final lap, Cal. Well, we know James Sofronis is late on the brakes, but I think even for him, the gap is way too much to make a move during this final lap. Comes up, puts a move on Povoledo. And then down into, this is an interesting little corner, isn't it? It falls away all the way on the exit, so you're off camber. It really is. You have to be so careful there. You can sometimes get misled. There we see Sofronis trying to look down the inside of the Volvo. Sometimes the traffic will not read that situation. Sofronis is through, though. Maintains second. But it's a big gap to the leader right now as he head down into turn nine. Last time into that hairpin complex. Brandon Davis, boy, what a drive, and especially when you consider he hasn't driven World Challenge since this race last year. He's been doing lots of oval racing out here in California, but back on a street course, on a road course, and he shows, I think he's even better than we've seen him before. Down the front straight, he's in traffic, but no worries. Brandon Davis comes through with a big win in a return to World Challenge. Sofronis giving it his all, brings it home in second. He really tried, but today, it's Brandon Davis's day once again. It is, and I think that may have actually saved P.D. Cunningham there a little bit because he split P.D. from Adam, so Adam got the checkered flag and P.D. continues, so that kept uh, P.D. from having another lap oh, where he had to defend. Oh, look at this! This is Von Kluge, and he is, that's Brown! He this is, is for the lead! Side. Brown, this is for the lead! Oh, Von Kluge runs wide! He Brown. touches him! That was a hit! He clipped him there. Is there a problem with Brown's car? Is he had a fuel? Oh, we saw there? that smoke, too. Watch here. Oh, my Kluge pushes he wide. Is wide. Brown, oh, oh, lights up the rears. <laughs> it's a drag race, and suddenly Von Kluge just accelerates away. But look at Brown. He's got no acceleration there off the hairpin. Yeah. Van Kluge takes the win. What happened to Brown there in the last half a lap? He had a commanding lead, and it all went away through turn nine. Unbelievable. So Jason Von Kluge comes through, gets his second win of the season, and here is Navarro. And right now, he's just sort of in a GTS sandwich, but he doesn't have any real pressure at this point. So all he's got to do is negotiate this double apex left into the hairpin one last time. And Rafael Navarro, welcome to World Challenge. What a show he has put on. And uh, in his first ever World Challenge event, unbelievably, Cal is going to bring it home with a win. What a great story. Superb run. Adams does that extra lap. I believe that he'd already seen the checkered flag once today. It would have been close with Ian Davis. Folks, it's a while after the event. And as has happened sometimes, things have changed in tech. And we wanted to update you on that, Calvin. It happened not in GT, but in GTS and Turing. It has. Unfortunately, two of our class winners today have been excluded from the results in GTS. Jason Von Kluge with his Mustang was found to have modified rear suspension outside of the rules. And in Turing car, Rafael Navarro had a modified ear intake on that VW GTI, given the win to Shea Holbrook. You can see here she is absolutely ecstatic, Greg. Only the second woman in World Challenge history to win a race, and Paul Brown 
in his 50th start, three straight fast laps. He finally gets the win. Take care, everybody.